Hi, as I mentioned the other time that there are actually six to eight tests or processes that will help you to find out the unknown. So today I'm actually going to one of the possible tests or processes, uh, which is the test of cat ions. Now I categorize it into three parts. So the three parts are guesses, the color precipitate and also the right precipitate. So sit back, watch and learn. Now if you like the video, remember to click like and don't forget to subscribe. Today I'm going to go through the test of cations. Now to test a cation, we have two solutions that we specifically use. One is sodium hydroxide and another is your aqueous ammonia, NH4OH. Out of this, I actually categorize into three portions. The first portion, upon heating after you add NaOH, there's one that will give out a gas. And the other two I will categorize into colored PPT, color precipitate, and the white color precipitate. Now out of all this, for the color precipitate, I have three. For the white precipitate, I have up to four of them. If you are in the combined science category, there will be three white precipitate. If you are under the pure chem category, then you will have four precipitate. And today I'm going to cover gas and the colored precipitate. Now, over here, we can see that under the cat ion test, for the colored, we have three. And there will be one that will give out a gas. So let's go through the one that will give out a gas first. Under the observation, over here, Gas evolve when tested with damp red litmus paper, it turned blue. Therefore, ammonia is present, and that can conclude. One of the cations is actually NH4+. So, when you add NaOH and you heat, the gas evolved if tested with red litmus paper, it will turn blue. Ammonia gas is present. Therefore, I can conclude ammonium is inside. Now, how about the colored one? Well, there are three colors. We have the green, reddish brown, and blue. So, I'm going to write down the green PPT here and the reddish brown PPT first. Well, for this two, when you add NaOH, you will write down upon adding NaOH, green PPT was observed. Bear in mind, Every time when you add NaOH or NH4OH, very often they will say, add dropwise of NaOH and add until no further changes are seen. It goes to show that you need to add an excess. So over here, I will say upon adding NaOH, green PPT was observed. And in excess of NaOH, green PPT, insoluble. Now, I cluster them together because if it's green, it's actually my Fe2+. Plus. And if it's red, it's actually my Fe3+. Plus. And the reason why I cluster them together is because whether I add NaOH, and if I see the green PPT, and I, if they say replace it with NH4OH, you will still see a green PPT if Fe2 plus is present. Therefore, if you add NH4OH and you see a reddish brown PPT and later on you add NaOH and you will still see a reddish brown PPT and that goes to show that Fe3 plus is present. Basically, if you see the green upon adding this two, you can co easily conclude that iron 2 is present already. So, and because their observation is similar, I will cluster them together over here. The only thing to take note over here is, depends on what you add, change this word, and depend on the color, change this word. 
Now, last but not least, we have the blue PPT. And who actually gave you the blue PPT? Well, upon adding an AOH, blue PPT was observed. And in excess of an AOH, blue PPT insoluble. However, for this portion here, ah, you will see a bit of change. Upon adding NH4OH, blue PPT was observed in excess of NH4OH, blue PPT dissolved, giving a deep blue solution. And this is none other than my Cu2+. As you can see over here, for the colored one, it's very obvious. Every time, every time you see a green, you can conclude that Fe2 plus is present upon adding NaOH or NH4OH. Now, the moment you add a little bit of NaOH and you see a dirty green or a green PPT, you do not need to worry and then add some more in order to further confirm because according to the QA notes over here, you can see very clearly green PPT insoluble in excess. So with things like this in mind, it can tell you that, hey, the moment I see green, I after I add this, I can easily conclude that, hey, Fe2 plus is present. I don't need to waste a lot of time and uh, to see if it can dissolve. But many people still are very concerned. Hey, but Ms. Alina, I really want to know what is adding in excess. If this is your test tube, adding more than half uh, of the test tube is actually considered as in excess, okay? So that is the colored one. Of course, the colored one, the most important thing is this Cu2 plus over here where you'll see a deep blue solution, okay? Upon adding aqueous ammonia, please bear in mind over here. Now, out of all this, the interesting fact is this one over here, NaOH, as you can see over here in the QA notes. Sodium hydroxide, ammonia produced upon warming. Ah, upon warming. As you can see over, in this entire QA notes here. They are very specifically, they say that there's only one that require heating, which is who? Ammonium. The purpose of adding sodium hydroxide upon heating is to release ammonia gas. So in exam, what if they ask you to heat after you add sodium hydroxide? I can quickly prepare my litmus paper. Now, upon saying that, I actually have an example of a past year paper over here. A very interesting paper because over here, like I say, they add sodium hydroxide. Basically, this portion here, and they segregate it nicely to show you that this is the part, top part where you can actually see a precipitate. And because of the precipitate here, if I cover the gently heat portion, out of the, all this, I can see a color and I can conclude who is the cation here using this uh, seven of this unknown by just by looking at the color. However, they add some more. They say here, gently warm the mixture. Many students will just move on and just warm the mixture, forgetting about the fact that one of the cation requires warming. It's none other than my ammonium. So the moment you see this, please prepare in your hand a damp red litmus paper so that as you heat the mixture, your litmus paper is near, you can see it change color. If it change color, it shows that ammonia gas is present and therefore ammonium is present. As I say, because of time constraint in your entire exam, they will not give you something to do okay, out of the blue. So there must be a reason behind it. So pay attention to that, okay? I hope this entire thing about this summary for the cat iron helps you. Okay, see you back for more. Hey, thank you so much for seeing through the entire video. I hope the video has benefited you, that you have learned how to differentiate a cat ion if you find out there's gases or they're colored. So right now, sit back and watch the next one, which is the white precipitate. Now remember, if you like the video, click like and don't forget to subscribe.